Lesson 5, Distributed Algorithms. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to explain the difference between sequential, parallel, and distributed computing. Calculate the speed up of a parallel solution to a problem and describe the benefits and challenges of parallel and distributed computing. Now, first, think about this. Think about a task that you can complete faster if you get other people to help. What's the most number of people you'd want to help you and why? In class, we would share out some things I can think about right off the top of my head. Well, cleaning my house, raking the leaves, washing dishes. Well, if I stop and I think about it, raking leaves, well, you probably, depending on the size of your yard, could use four or five, maybe even six people. You start getting more than that, and you start getting in each other's way. Washing dishes, well, you could have somebody wash, somebody rinse, somebody dry. You get more than three people, and it's crowded. Cleaning the house, it's kind of the same thing. You could do maybe three or four people, but at some point, if you're vacuuming and dusting and cleaning bathrooms, if you get too many people in there, you're going to be tripping over each other and you're going to start slowing each other down. Now, as we've explored in this unit, computer scientists are always looking for more efficient ways to run programs. One way to do this is to develop faster algorithms that run on a single computer. Another idea we're going to explore today is figuring out ways to run programs on many computers at the same time. We just talked about some benefits and challenges when many people help with a task. As we'll see, the same is true when running programs on multiple computers. It can lead to some improvements, but also some new challenges. Now, this activity works much better in person. In the virtual world, we're going to walk through it, and especially if you are watching this video okay, because you missed class. It's hard to do this with more than one person. So, essentially, I would have a deck of cards. And the first thing I would do is shuffle up the cards, hand them to a person, and then ask them as quickly as possible, get the cards sorted so all the red cards are at the bottom and all the black cards are at the top. Doesn't matter anything else but the order, just red on the bottom, black on the top. And time it and see how long it takes. And we'd let a couple of different people do this, shuffle up the decks and let a couple of people do it. Now, it could take two, three, four minutes, whatever it takes. The second challenge, we would take some decks of cards, shuffle them all up, and then we would put them in a neat stack face down. And then as quickly as possible, we would get the cards sorted so all the reds are at the bottom and all the black cards are on the top. But this time, two people are working on the sort, not just one. And time will stop when the cards are not just sorted, but back into one neat stack. This should take less time than the first one. You've got two people sorting. It should go faster. Now challenge three would be a full group sort. You've got four people. Four people are standing around, shuffle up the cards, put them in a neat stack, face down. Then as quickly as you can, get the cards sorted so that all the red cards are at the bottom and all the black cards are at the top. And again, time will stop when they're sorted. This will probably be faster than the two-person sort, definitely faster than the one-person sort. But just like the two-person sort was not twice as fast, there were a couple of seconds where you had to split the deck, then you still have to sort, and then you have to put the deck back together. Okay, so it wasn't quite cutting the time in half. This will not be cutting that original time into quarters because you first have to pick up the stack and divide it up. Unless you count out the cards, some people are going to get an extra card or two. So you're going to have to wait until everybody sorted their stacks, and then you'll put them all back together. So again, it will be faster, just it's not as fast. It's not speeding up as much. What you should notice is that there are steps that are sequential, performed one at a time. Okay, and part of that is um, distributing out the different stacks and putting them back together. The parallel is once everybody has their little subset of cards, they can sort their own little subset. But then it's got to come back and sequentially go through, give me all the reds and then give me all the blacks. Okay? So sequential, they're performed in order, 
Parallel says that some steps are performed at the same time. Now, a lot of challenges that were just encountered show up when you try to run a program on multi com multiple computers as well. Sometimes you need to wait because one of the computers finished before another. It can be complicated to split up work and recombine it when moving in and out of parallel portions. They're faster, but not always as much faster as you think. Okay, as a prompt, think about this. What portions of your algorithms for challenges two and three were parallel? Hopefully you said sorting, the actual process of sorting between reds and blacks. That was parallel. What makes things complicated or slows you down during the parallel portions of your algorithm? Waiting on the other person to finish. Okay. If I get 10 cards and somebody else has 40, they're going through their 40. It might take longer than me going through my 10. Okay. Speed up. That's the sequential time divided by parallel time. So sequential time divided by parallel time. If we look at our card sorting activity, okay, and let's say it took 60 seconds to sort the cards first time, and the second time it went with two people, it was 40 seconds, that means our speed up was 1.5. What was your group's speed up in challenge two? And what about challenge three? Are you surprised that when you added another person, you didn't go twice as fast? Or when you added four people, you didn't go four times as fast? Speed up, there becomes a limit. You can't always get faster and faster just because you're throwing things at it or people at it. You probably notice that your speed up is lower than the number of people helping sort. Sorting with two people doesn't give a speed up of two, and sorting with three doesn't give a speed up of three. Because some portions are always still sequential, the benefits of adding more processes will go down, and eventually the speed up reaches a limit. It's not just you. Speed up is never equal to the number of processors. This isn't just a let's let people sort problem. This is computers too. Some portions of your algorithm can't be made parallel. Each additional processor helps a little less. Eventually, the speed up reaches a limit and there's no reason to split it up further. This is too many cooks in the kitchen. Too many people doing things, too many computers doing things, and it just bogs it down. It makes it more complicated than it should. Now, we're going to watch a video, and as you watch this video, you want to write down what is the type of computing present, why is the type of computing presented distributed, and why is distributed computing used to solve the problem? You should be able to answer both those questions at the conclusion of the video. Now, you're going to watch the video at the conclusion of this video, because we're almost to the end. This is what the picture looks like. Click on it, bing, go away, watch the video, come back. Now, remember that distributed computing is very similar to parallel computing. The main idea is that programs can be run on lots and lots of computers. Distributed and parallel computing are helpful for solving really big problems that you could not normally solve on a single computer. So what have we learned? Well, parallel computing consists of both a parallel portion that is shared and a sequential portion. A sequential solution's efficiency is measured as the sum of all its steps. But a parallel solution takes as long as its sequential tasks plus the longest of its parallel tasks. Oftentimes, a parallel solution will be faster, but there is a limit. Solutions that use parallel computing can scale more effectively than solutions that use sequential computing. Why? Well, if we continue to add tasks, a sequential solution would continue to get larger and larger. However, a parallel system, those tasks could be balanced across each one of the processors. Now, typically, parallel programs are faster. Parallel programs don't get faster forever. At some point, adding more processors doesn't help. Parallel programs can be more complicated. And they can be slowed down if only one of many devices is slow. Distributed programs can be run on thousands or even millions of computers, which allows you to take on enormous problems. As a wrap up, let's look at some of our vocab words. Sequential computing. Programs run in order, one command at a time. Parallel computing. Programs are broken into small pieces, some of which are run simultaneously. Distributed computing. Programs are run by multiple devices. 
Speed up. The time used to complete a task sequentially divided by the time to complete a task in parallel. It does not necessarily match the number of processors or the number of people. Based on today's activities, what are the pros and the cons of parallel and distributed computing? What do you think? Well, that's a wrap. And benefits and cons? Benefit, it can be faster con. There's a limit to how fast it can go. And there's some things that just can't be done sequentially.